Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss about the black rotor test. Name itself, it represents rotor will be blocked. So look at here, we have the rotor. The rotor will be blocked. Blocked means tight. Rotor will be tight. Although we are giving the supply, rotor doesn't rot rotates. That means this is called the rotor block test. Here, block rotor test is normally performed on induction motor to find the leakage impedance. So it has the leakage impedance is there, ZL. And also find torque and also find motor short circuit current. Why it is short circuit? Block rotor test is nothing but short, we can call it as a short circuit test also. Both are same. Okay. So leakage impedance and torque and the short circuit current. Three things will be fine. Black rotor test is analogous to the short circuit test on transformer. So already I told that black rotor on three phase induction motor is equal to the short circuit test on transformer. Both are same. Here shaft of the motor is clamped that is black. Here we have the sh motor shaft is there that will be black. So it cannot be moved and rotor winding is short circuited. So whenever it is not winding moved, the rotor winding also short circuited. It acts as a short circuit. That is the thing. Here, if you observe here, if you observe the diagram, this is the block rotor test diagram. How can it represents? This represents, it is for example, rotor. It should be blocked with some belt blocked with some belt here just observe here the reduced supply voltage will be applied and to the three phase stator and inside we have the rotor stator has two watt meters that is w1 and w2 and stator will take the voltage between two windings that is the vsc and current is the isc okay yeah, this is the complete diagram, general diagram. So, the most important thing, we are applying the reduced voltage. Don't forget it, not reduced current. But in case of open circuit test or no load test, we are applying the reduced current. In slip rings, rotor winding is short circuited through slip rings. In slip ring, not slip ring, this is the slip ring induction motor. In the slip ring induction motor, rotor winding is short circuited through slip rings. And in cage motor, cage motor means squirrel gauge induction motors, the rotor bars are permanently shorted. Their short means rotor bars are shorted. Right. This is the meaning of the short circuit of the induction motor. In blackwood rotor test, the applied voltage on the stator terminals should be low voltage should be low that means it is 5 to 10 percent of rated voltage don't forget this is most important thing otherwise if you apply the more voltage normal voltage uh, could damage the winding of the stator this is important thing the stator winding should be damaged if you apply the that voltage the rotor the stator winding should be damaged so you should apply that because rotor will be blocked because there is the resistance approximately equal to zero. In this rotor doesn't rotate its speed becomes zero. Rotor doesn't rotate and it becomes zero. Hence slip is unity load resistance becomes zero. So by that slip is S is nothing but one unity and the load resistance also will become zero okay essentially in this process only now slowly increase the voltage in the stator so stator voltage look at here this is in our control we can increase slowly okay so the current reaches to the rated value 
the current reaches to the rated value it slowly increases the current will reaches to rated value at this point note down the voltmeter watt meter and ammeter readings so already we have by slowly increases voltage value we will take the voltmeter value and ammeter value these watt meter values okay yeah and you know the values by taking the voltmeter we will get the power entering into the circuit ammeter current entering into the circuit and voltage into the circuit okay right this test can be repeated at different stator voltages for accurate values so stator voltages we have different different voltages by varying the stator voltages we are doing the for accurate values we are doing like that okay yeah so to understand the calculations of the black hole rotor test we should do we should understand the equivalent circuit in the black hole rotor test we are applying voltage assumed as generally vsc and current will be taken as i1 and stator has resistance r1 rotor has resistance jx1 and the current will be flowed to the rotor winding that is the winding it has jx2 and rotor has some resistance take it as a r2 r2 can be r2 dash just take it as r2 dash r2 dash equal r2 by yes r2 by yes yeah in this core loss is very low very low due to low voltage apply because voltage and frequency both depends on the core loss you know that and frictional loss is also negligible as rotor is stationary so rotor speed is zero there is no speed means there is no friction so frictional loss is also zero but stator and rotor copper losses are high it is denote with the copper loss so stator as well as rotor and rotor copper loss okay these two things are high that's why we are doing this okay so in this we will take like this let us denote with the copper loss is wcu for example the copper loss is wcu yes and therefore therefore the copper loss how we will get the copper loss copper loss value equal to 3 times of i square into r not 1 we should take this is the r not 1 what is r not 1 r not plus r2 dash so here what is r not from the diagram r not 1 equal to r1 plus r2 dash by s yes. okay so you know where r not 1 motor winding stator and rotor as per the referred to stator yes so we can find out the r not 1 from here the r not 1 equal to copper loss by 3 i s square 3 i s square so what are the things we have taken i s i s means you can take it as i s c also no problem here i s c is short circuit current name itself it is the short circuit current okay vsc is name itself it is the short circuit voltage and so we by doing this we will get the z naught also this is the short circuit impedance short circuit impedance referred to primary refer to primary we will get these things from this so z naught one directly we will get how we will get z naught one by doing vsc by isc how just look at here just observe here this is vsc this is i1 or isc by doing this we will get vsc by isc okay 
So from this we can find out the motor leakage reactance per phase state R is like this. We can find it x01. How we will find out the x01? x01 from z01 square minus r01 square. Yeah. What is x01? How we will get the x01? Generally we have a one condition that is state or reactance x1 and rotor reactance x2 rotor reactance x2 are normally assumed equal normally assumed equal that's why we can take x1 equal to x2 equal to x naught 1 by 2 we will get like this okay so we will find out the r2 value also rotor resistance is from r naught 1 we should remove the r1 r naught 1 total resistance refer to primary r2 is the uh, rotor resistance r1 is the primary resistance we will get that so from these all the equations we will directly find out the short circuit current for normal supply voltage from these all the equations we will find out the short circuit current current for normal supply voltage normal supply voltage that value is represent isc equal to is by v by vs now this is the v normal supply voltage don't forget normal supply voltage here vsc isc is the so this is is not isc short circuit current is and we must note short circuit current is and so this is isc equal to ie into v by vs so this is the formula so this is, this is a general formula actually this there is no need of the formula but these are the important parameters these are the important parameters okay no need this formula yes okay so otherwise you can write like this isc equal to i into v by vs is the short circuit formula for the supply voltage okay so this is about the short circuit test on the three phase induction motor and the calculation involved in the short circuit test i hope all of you understand the session thank you